Welcome everyone. My name is Cole Yun. You can call me Bear. And welcome to the first ever The Bear Cast. It is January 26, 2024. I'm really excited. Um, I've been having this idea for years now, and I'm finally, finally getting this off. So I'm really excited to be with you. Let me tell you a little bit about who I am and what the show's going to entail, and then we'll get started. So yeah um first things first my name is cole yun um originally grew up in seattle 24 years old no 23 years old going to be 24 here somewhat soon and um yeah so i am a currently i'm, I'm a division one football player and i played four and a half years at the university of oregon and i am now currently playing at campbell university so go chaos but yeah and so I really like sports. Um, sports has been kind of my thing. Um, I've played basketball when I was little, baseball, football. I've done track and field. I've done a lot of things. And so this show is mostly going to tell you about my takes personally on just what's going on in the sports world, especially in football, basketball, baseball, and a couple of others. I want to get more into golf and hockey. But yeah, that's just what I want to do. And so yeah, I mean, I'm really excited, and let's get to it. And so the first topic I want to talk about is the Michigan legend himself, Jim Harbaugh. Yes, if anyone has not heard, recently Jim Harbaugh has left Michigan, actually, after winning a national championship, and he is now becoming the new Los Angeles Chargers head coach. He is signing over a five-year deal. Pretty crazy, right? And... LA, what's nice about um, the Chargers is they only had to buy them out for $1.5 million. Thought it was going to be a lot higher. And during his time in Michigan, he not only he's a player, he was a former player. He also had an 89-25 and 25 record. He almost got fired his third season after delivering three 10-win seasons, but got the ship turning around and actually won the first ever national championship for Michigan since the 90s. Pretty crazy, right? I mean, I would consider it pretty crazy myself. And so now, who's currently trying to replace Harbaugh? I mean, that's a good question. It's now the offense coordinator as well as the offensive line coach, Sharon Moore. It's Sharon, yeah, Sharon Moore. And he um, took over for Harbaugh as Harbaugh was suspended for that amount of time with the NCAA. And Michigan did offer him contract extension, which would have made him the highest paying coach of college of all of college town, college football, which I think would have been crazy. It was like over 18 million a year. It was something crazy. But um he decided to turn it down and he is now with the LA Chargers. So overall I think this is a win win for everyone. I think that for starters, I think Jim Harbaugh needed to leave. I think he needed to leave to Michigan. I think he needed to leave there. One, I think that he's done his time. He's done everything he's asked for. Win a national championship. Win multiple Big Ten championships. Beat Ohio State multiple times, which is not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. That's like one of the biggest rivalries of college football. So that, I think he's done a lot in that aspect. And then also he has turned that ship around. And Michigan's now a very very attractive place for recruits now and he's also made really good talent i wouldn't be surprised if jj mccarthy is actually a mid-tier first round pick because of what jim harbaugh has done with jj mccarthy even though i think blake corum and that offensive line is really really good and their defense is really really good but jim harbaugh has a way with his quarterbacks whether i think whatever it is whether it's swiss cheese or whatever he makes or it's a bagel he can honestly make him into a star that's, that's how I see Jim Harbaugh, because I think Jim Harbaugh has, he's done it both too, in the NFL, as well as the NCAA, he's played, he's coached with the Niners, he's also played with the Chargers, so this is also kind of a little reunion for Jim Harbaugh, but he's also coached at Stanford, and Stanford's also a really good program, so... Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's a win-win, I also think this is also a win for Michigan, because Michigan will not... I, I think they're going to get less violations now because they said, hey, look, Jim Harbaugh did all this stuff during Michigan at this time, but we, but he left. We don't have him anymore. Why should we get punished? Which, I mean, it's kind of messed up. But, I mean, that's just how, the, that's how college football works. And so 
I think this is a win-win for everyone. Chargers got their guy in Jim Harbaugh. I mean, they've already got their guy with Justin Herbert. I mean, Justin Herbert's going to be fine. And then I also think, too, Michigan is on a new chapter. We're going to see what happens with this chapter, but I also think their head coach that's heavily favored right now, if they hire him, I think it would be a great hire because he's been in Michigan. I mean, well, he's been in Ohio State. Sorry about that. He's been in Ohio State. He's beaten Penn State. He has beaten a lot of good teams under Jim Har under when Jim Harbaugh was on that little suspension. And I think he did just fine. I think he's doing what he needs to do. And I, I personally thought it was enough that he was going to get a coaching job. And I'm actually really glad that he's staying in Michigan because it's just a good it's, – it's, it's a good feel-good story. And I feel like that he's done enough where it's like, okay – I know I can get this job now, and I think it's now going to be up to him to see what happens. I mean, it's going to be interesting how Michigan will deal up now with Washington, Oregon, USC, UCLA, all joining now the Big Ten, but it's going to be interesting, and I'm very – I think it's going to be an interesting chapter for Michigan progressing, but I think it's a win-win for everyone. Before I move on, I also want to say this too. Make sure all your eyes are now on Justin Herbert. I think Justin Herbert's going to do just fine. But now I could see people saying, all right, Justin's got his head coach. He's got some targets. He's still got Eckler. Yeah, you could say the offensive line needs some improving. But, I mean, they're going to get Rashad Slater back, who I think is a top three tackle in the league. So, I mean, honestly, it, it, there's going to be some eyes now heavenly pointing towards more Herbert. And I think that Harbaugh's going to get this ship fixed. I think defensively, too, I think he's going to get the right people in. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if they... Maybe trade some guys. I mean, Khalil Mack, I could see getting traded. I could see Joey Bosa getting the cut. I could even see Derwin James getting the cut, even though I think Derwin James played his butt off last year. I mean, this year particularly. But, yeah, no, I think it's interesting what's going to happen. But I am. I think it's going to be an interesting time. But I think it's a great hire for, for the Chargers. And I think this is going to be a new chapter for Michigan. And I think this is a much-needed new chapter. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Next up, we're going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons. And the Atlanta Falcons yesterday just hired their brand new coach. And it is the Los Angeles Rams coordinator, defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris. He was the coordinator for a while. He was during that time where the LA Rams actually won the Super Bowl in 2021 against Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals when they had Jamar Chase. He hit you know, the spiel. And, uh, but you know what's ironic too? He, is also he was a former head coach and his record was 21 and 30 and um what's also ironic is that he was at Tampa in 2002 and he was an intern and he actually won the Super Bowl in Tampa when Tampa won in 2002 so just a little food for thought but overall i think that this decision it's an interesting decision because they also interviewed Bill Belichick that's also the bigger piece is that Bill Belichick was there for the taking, and they decided not to take them, not to take Bill Belichick and his posse. And that's interesting within itself because the owner has been trying to get someone like a Bill Belichick, like a Jimmy, like, you know, like those big tier coaches. And big and Bill Belichick is a big tier coach. Like, I think he, I mean, besides, I mean, New England, he's done really, really well. I mean, yeah, you can attribute, attribute that to Brady. I mean, He's done well, but also, let's not forget, Belichick's had a really, really good defense. Gerard Mayo, he's had other good guys, too. And I'm just, I'm very shocked that Atlanta decided not to hire him. But I also think it's kind of a smart move. I mean, you're going to get someone that's younger. People don't really know him as a head coach. I actually had to look up this research to find out that he was actually a head coach before he was the Rams DC. Even though he was 21 and 30, he was a young buck back then. People make mistakes when they're young. So I think not only I think he's going to bring Raheem Morris is going to bring a new energy. I think this is also a good move for the Falcons because Bill Belichick, I feel like he's going to put his paw on there. And what's interesting about it now is that Bill Belichick is probably not going to get a head coaching job. I mean, Seattle's not going to get. I don't think they're going to get Belichick. I think that's not their way. The Commanders, I've heard Dan Quinn's probably going to go. And then I would also, and then you also got the um, the Panthers hiring the Bengals. I would, yeah, they hired a new guy. The Titans hired the Bengals OC. Not not the Panthers, but still, like everyone's gotten their jobs. 
but not Bill Belichick. So that's interesting to point out. I think it's interesting how all that's going down, but I think it's honestly a good move for Atlanta. I think they need a little bit of younger blood. I think they're going to be their, their biggest situation is going to be what's going to happen to that quarterback position. You know, Raheem Morris is going to do a great job as the new head coach, and he's going to bring his guys. He's going to bring his guys, and I think they're going to do a good job defensively. It's where off, offense is the big concern. I think Ritter is not great. I think they need to move on from him. You could get a Russell Wilson, or you could draft Young. I think they should draft Young, go Michael Penix. But um, we'll see what happens. I mean, Atlanta has a lot of good opportunities ahead of them. And I think that, I mean, yeah, they're going to have Bajon Robinson. They're still going to have that offensive line. But honestly, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And um, we'll go from there. We'll go from there. I mean, we're going to see what happens. But I think Atlanta, I think they're on the right trajectory. They are on the right trajectory. And next, let's talk, besides talking about the recent head coaching stuff, we got some football games this weekend. The Baltimore Ravens will be playing against the Kansas City Chiefs as well as in the NFC Championship game, the San Francisco 49ers will be playing against the Detroit Lions. So I want to give you guys my predictions on it, who I think is going to win, what are the keys, we're going to see what happens. But, um... I think for the AFC game, I think the Ravens will win this game, but I think it's going to be closer than what everyone anticipates. I think it's going to be 27-24. Um, the biggest key that I see within this game is how are you going to stop Lamar Jackson? It's not within the trenches. I mean, yeah, Kansas City is going to run the ball, but I think, I mean, they're going to run it, but I think that Ravens defense is going to find ways to stop Isaiah Pacheco and Patrick Mahomes. And yeah, I mean, Kyle Hamilton's going to have a great matchup against Travis Kelsey. And I think that's also another key we need to watch is Kyle Hamilton versus Mahomes, Reed, and Kelsey. Because I think Andy Reed's going to find some plays or find some little, little, it's, it's, it's like with football, when you're doing scouting, and this is what I've learned at my time, and I mean, I'm still learning this, you always find little details. When I was with... When I was looking at certain guys, I mean, I played against KT, like, and, and even if it's in practice, I mean, KT was my teammate. I'm just using that as an example. You look at certain moves. Okay, this dude likes doing the chop rip, or, and that relates to all positions. So I'm sure Travis or like Travis and Andy have probably been working together extra hard on the film. And um, I'm sure they're seeing, okay, this person does this a little slightly. How about we do it this way, just to tweak it a little bit? And those fine, subtle movements are going, to, I think, are going to determine how Kyle Hamilton does. And don't get me wrong, I think Kyle Hamilton is a superstar. I think he's done a great job. I think he's actually one of the biggest steals in any draft. I think he should have been the number one pick and not He He went to number 14, which I thought was crazy. And I'm surprised Seattle didn't pick him up. But um, overall, though, I think it's going to be a fun game. I think those are the two big keys. But I really think Lamar Jackson's just on a different level. I think he, I don't think per personally he shouldn't win MVP. But if he, if we had to choose a quarterback to win the MVP, it would be him. Personally, I got Christian McCaffrey ahead of him. And speaking of Christian McCaffrey, I think this is going to be a very, very big day for the NFC championship wise. And my biggest key for this game is actually the trenches. I think that it's going to come down to which D-line wants it more. I mean, both of those O-lines, Trent Williams, uh, Colton McKivitz, they've done really, really well. They've done really, really well to protect Brock Purdy. And I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens with Debo. That's also another key. But I think that either if it's Debo or not, they still got Christian McCaffrey. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is easily the best running back in the NFL. How come people are saying, oh, well, San Francisco's not going to win because of Debo Samuels? No. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey's on a different level and could be the MVP favorite. Like, this dude has just been going, going, and going. Not only he's been running the ball really, really well, he's also has, he can catch now. He can catch really, really well. At a certain time that people didn't realize, he had a touchdown every single game until this year, which broke it. Think about that. I just, I don't get it why people are like, well, Detroit's going to win. I know people don't really like San Francisco. And don't get me wrong. I, I don't like them too, but I, I'm coming at it from a realistic standpoint. And I know the defense is going to show up. I know that Chase Young, Nick Bosa, 
um, Hargrave, they're all going to do a great job. And Fred Warner is honestly the best thing San Francisco's ever had. I mean, that's their version of Bobby Wagner. And I think he is a hard hitting, nose grind to grind guy. And yeah, my boy Demo's there. He gonna he gonna strap it up. He gonna strap it up. But honestly, I mean, I just see them strapping it up. And I mean, Detroit. I mean, give like, props to where props to do. I mean, my boy Panay, he's gonna do really really well. He is the leader of that offensive line, and I know it. For, you know, he's not gonna get up without a fight now. And Jared Goff has done good. And I've kind of been, I mean, I've always said this before. If you give Jared Goff a good system, which I think Ben Johnson and um, oh, oh, Dan Campbell, I'm blanking on his name, Dan Campbell have given to him, I think he can be very, very good. And that's what it is. He is a great system quarterback, and he's doing a really good job, in my opinion. A really good job. He's done what he needs to do. And that's all what you can ask for. And I think they are, both of these teams are very run centric. So I think they're going to run the ball as best as they can. Yes, a mod safe Brown there. I'm sure they're going to give them targets. But I think that's also another key, just thinking about it, is the DBs. What, who, which side's going to give up more passing yards? Because I think that's going to help things with whoever wins. Because I think it's all going to be about running the ball, trying to run it up your throat, and then trying to fake it with a play action. That's how I see it. And so I got San Francisco winning this 21 to 10. But I also think, too, this is going to be a closer fight than what people see on the scoreboard. And so, yeah, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. And I think it's going to be interesting what happens with the Super Bowl. Because I think whoever, whoever, I, to be honest, personally, whoever wins the AFC game, in my opinion, is going to win against the NFC. So we'll see what happens. But I'm very excited for... Both of these matchups, I think they're going to be fun and electric, and I think people are going to be very, very excited. All right, now let's transition into some basketball. First up, um, let's talk about the um, Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks have fired Adrian Griffin. They have fired him after a very, very impressive record. They were second East, 30 and 13 this year. They fired him. And guess who they decided to hire? Doc Rivers. Our man, Doc Rivers. And don't get me wrong. I and mean, he's only one, Doc Rivers has only won one final. But what's interesting is that I was actually listening to JJ Reddick's podcast. I like JJ Reddick. And he said that there's no way Doc Rivers is going to make them win the finals now. And you know what? I agree. I agree. Doc Rivers is not your coach. Yet there was one other coach that I think people just blocked mail for no entire reason. And that was Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson deserves to be a head coach in the NBA again. Doc Rivers has blown many teams. And the only one that he had that won the finals was with KG, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce. And you make the claim that all three of those guys are not 15 players. Sorry, but Gian Giannis and Dame are not going to hold everything up. They still got problems. Brook Lopez has significantly regressed. Um, they've had defensive problems. A lot of things happened. And I've also heard reports that they the the coach was trying to diminish um Giannis's brother Thaddeus to a really, really low row, basically to the port when he was gonna get cut. And he was like, No way, you're not gonna do that to my brother. Which I will say, that's nepotism at its finest. But he's got power. Giannis Ante de Kumpo. I mean, I'm not gonna knock the man. I mean, he's honestly He's the top three small forward in the league right now. I got LeBron. You can maybe make the case for KD, but I don't over him. That's it. I mean, yeah, you could say Kawhi, but Kawhi, he's been on and off. He's been on and off right now. So it's like I, I, I can't say to you personally that Giannis is not better than Kawhi. Giannis is 1,000% better than Kawhi. I mean, yeah. I mean, you. they had Chris Middleton and all. Giannis carried them to that finals one year. Kawhi had Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. I'm sorry. Fred Van Vliet is disgusting. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's just interesting how this goes. I hope they win a finals. I'm kind of rooting just because I like Damian Lillard. I saw him play a couple of times. I actually saw him drop 70 and went, um, that one time against my Rockets. I've, people don't know I'm a huge Rockets fan. I mean, it was kind of messed up, but it was still, it was still fun. It was still fun. I enjoyed it for what it was, and 
James a baller. I hope he wins the finals, but we'll see what happens. I mean, he should have been in Miami, but he wasn't because Portland wanted to. They wanted their way. Portland wanted the. They wanted all the expertise and the value off of Damian Lillard. Which, hey, I don't blame them. It's kind of messed up, but I don't blame them. And speaking of a Toronto legend himself, Kyle Lowry. If people have not heard of him, he is, I think, one of the greatest Toronto Raptors that I've ever seen, like, play on the TV. I haven't seen him play an actual in the court, but I like his game, and I like his style. He got traded from the Charlotte Hornets to the Miami Heat, and he also was swapped with a first-round pick. So, yeah, so the Miami Heat traded Kyle Lowry and a first-round pick, and guess who they got back? Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier. And I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Miami, that was a fleece, in my opinion. Because one, I think Terry Rozier is a great player. I think you can see he gives, he gives out 20 to 30 a night. And I'm just shocked that they were able to fleece him for a very small amount. And what's the crazy thing is that Charlotte's kind of on a rebuild. And they decided, you know what, we're going to buy out Kyle Lowry. I, I'm I'm just shocked. I really am because I honestly thought they were going to do. I thought Kyle Riley had some value, but it doesn't look like it. And I think that Miami got a great deal. I think he is a great two option. Jimmy Butler needs help. Like I don't get it how Miami did not push harder for Damian Lillard to come for Miami. Like I'm just saying. But Terry Rozier, I think they match their personalities. I think Terry Rozier actually matches somewhat of Jimmy Butler's gameplay. And I think that if Jimmy needs to pass it, I think they finally got a good shooter in Terry Rozier. And so I like this move from the Miami standpoint. I think Charlotte's kind of on a rebuilding situation. So I get it. I get it. It's not really a fleece, in my opinion. But I will say that first round pick... It's a protected pick, and it's all the way down there, I think, to like 2028, 2029. And if it gets to like 2029, it's unprotected. So honestly, I think it's a good deal for the Miami Heat. I think this this is a huge win for them. Charlotte's kind of on a rebuild, and they also have Lamella Ball. And I, I just don't get it why they haven't put enough supporting cast around him, because Lamella Ball is an all-star. I mean, he should be. I mean, he's been really, really good, but... I know it's been kind of on and off, and he's been it's been nicked up and dinged. But I mean, what he plays, he's an all star. So that's how I see him. And speaking of all stars, let's talk about the all star selection. Uh, yeah, so the all star, the all star selection, and the picks happened, and we found out who our starters are. So on the West, we got Shea Gilgis Alexander, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic, LeBron James. Kevin Durant, and Nikola Jokic. Those are for your West. Now, for the East, this gets a little controversial. And so, um, for point guard, we got Tyrese Halliburton. He is with the Indiana Pacers. He's had a really good year. But this is where things get a little interesting. Damian Lillard is your shooting guard for the Eastern Conference. This had people in a fuss. They were very, very shocked and actually very disappointed. A lot of people were trying to see if Jalen Brunson from the New York Knicks actually was going to make it. But he's actually a reserve. And then next, we got the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Jason Tatum from the Boston Celtics. And lastly, the 70-point man himself, Mr. Joel Embiid. And he, by the way, he produced 70 points the other day. With five assists, and he it's like the first time it's ever happened since Will Chamberlain. That is impressive. Impressive people. But yeah, let's let's have this talk too. And I just I find it interesting because they didn't add Y Leonard. Steph Curry's been healthy too. And Steph Curry's he's been really good. I mean, I feel like that he's the only reason why the Warriors aren't the worst team in the NBA right now. <laughs> he's not on the starting list too. And also Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson's had a magnificent season so far. I'm just shocked from the perspective that we're having this conversation about whether Dame should have been in or Jalen should have been in. Don't get me wrong. I actually think both of them deserve to be in the starting lineup. The person that I was very shocked about is Tyrese Halliburton. Why is he in the starting lineup? That I don't get. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. He's had some great games this year. He put on a show against the Milwaukee Bucks. He put on a show. But Jalen Brunson's been on a different level. I mean, and, and it's Dame Dollar. I'm not surprised they're not going to put him. I mean, I'm I'm not surprised that they are putting him in the starting lineup. Not surprised because Dame Dollar. It, I mean, he is an, he is box offense talent. This dude can literally pull up from the full court range or half court and just switch it like no day like tomorrow. I mean, we need to have a discussion too about Jalen Brunson. He should be a top ten player in the league, in my opinion. He should be, but also Damian Lillard too is really, really good. And I think he's actually one of the best three-point shooters of all time. I mean, I still got Steph Curry at number one. Steph Curry, Steph Curry's number one. But honestly, if I had to do my top five, Steph Curry, as for the best three-pointer, Steph Curry, Ray Allen, Clay Thompson, Damian Lillard, Mike Miller. Reggie Miller would be um, number six. I gave you top six, but I should have gave you top five. I'm just shocked that we're having this discussion. But don't get me wrong. I'm, I think Jalen Brunson's done an amazing job. I think there's there's a lot of good things going on. But I just I find it interesting that they're not going to award him as a starter. I just, I just find that weird. So, yeah. Well, this is it. First episode is officially concluded. Um, thank you again for listening to this whole entire time. I just want to thank you again and um, stay sharp with everyone. Have a good weekend. Um, I'm planning to upload once a week. Make sure you subscribe. You like to the page. Make sure you have that notification bell. Make sure you have all of that to make sure you keep in contact. Stay safe, everyone. Have a good weekend.